right bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters to today's webinar entitled mastering the world of islamic finance your path to uh, your path to success inshallah this is the second webinar that we have uh, this the second edition of the same webinar that we've had a couple of months ago uh, but alhamdulillah today if you are here uh, looking to know more about INSEP and some of our programs if not all of our programs as well as some financial aids some scholarship aids that are available at INSEP University you're at the right place because that's what we're going to do tonight and uh, or today depending where you are in the world uh, welcome everyone and uh, my name is Aizuddin I'm your MC for today and we have uh, very capable speakers who are know who know all about uh, the programs as well as the financial aid. So uh, first up, let me bring to the screen Professor Dr. Zulkarnain Mohamad Sori. He is the Associate Dean of the School of Graduate and Professional Studies here at INSEF and he will be talking about uh, talking about the industry as well as the, uh, the programs available at INSEF University. So uh, without any further ado, Prof, over to you. Yeah, uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to start uh, our discussion on education at INSEF. Okay, um, okay my name is Zukanain. Um, uh, I'm with INSEF for, I think, more than nine years now. Um, next year will be my 10th years. Okay, so uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, education at INSEF as the title there, Mastering the World of Islamic Finance Through INSEF University, Your Path to Success. So before I start the uh, whatever uh, slides planned for me, uh, let uh look around means you as a future student of INSEF, look around you, what we are facing now, the world are facing the the people, the humanity, uh, put aside the Gaza-Israel issue or Palestine-Israel issue, but on on yourself, at your, your current uh, place, current situation, what is facing us first? Uh, the global warming means that uh, world become uh, warmer from time to time. And then as a result of warmer become hot from time to time, we have uh, climate change. You will see if you look at Pakistan, big flood or flash flood, uh, India, you look at Turkey, uh, wildfire. Uh, if you look at... Um, various part of the world, everywhere in the world. You have wildfire, you have uh, recently Philippines and Mexico, we have this earthquake. Um, so uh, the, the um, global warming, the um, um, climate change, the world become uh, a bit uh, uh, unstable, I would say. Quote unquote. And then you'll see that around this morning, I, I, I just listened to President Jokowi's speech to the their, their countryman, Indonesia. Uh, he said that about 340 million of people in the world are hunger now, poor and hunger. And then um, the economy not so good. And then if you look at social issues, there are many social issues, social uh, imbalances. And then if you look at life underwater, you look at life on the land, everybody at risk now. Um, so all this issue, you have to think on your role in the future. So what you can play in the future to at least slow down the global warming, uh, contribute to the social imbalances, contribute to the life on land, life underwater. Okay, uh, can you, uh, next slide, please. 
All right, so um, I'm going to bring you to the education at INSEF. I would consider INSEF have uh, crafted their educational program uh, into a lifelong uh, learning journey uh, and uh, innovative program. Okay, we, we will go through this. Uh, my agenda here, we have, uh, I'm going to discuss on PhD in Islamic Finance, MSc, Master in Islamic Finance Practice, Executive Master in Islamic Finance, MBA, Micro Certification, Professional Certification, and then I will quickly bring you through to the program overview, program structure, and then we will uh, get to know the faculty members and then SGPS team. Okay, next. Okay, next. The future of education. I'm, I, I, I just talked to you about the global warming issue where now we are facing something which is different. If you look at yourself, I can uh, can tell you about my uh, my time during um, my young age at uh, around 1970s, late 70s, 1980s. Uh, my, the, the environment is not the same as what we have now. Uh, a bit cool last time. Now we have flash flood everywhere warm very warm in the, the daytime okay and then poverty as i mentioned earlier professor uh, uh, the president jokowi mentioned that 340 million people in the world uh hunger now means that it is it is really extreme poverty okay and then social uh, injustice now happen everywhere, life on land, life underwater at risk. How life underwater at risk? Okay, because of the carbon or greenhouse gas, when we release a lot of greenhouse gas and then uh, partly will go into the uh, ecosystem and it go into the water, go to the sea and sea become more acidic. When the sea become more acidic, it affect all the corals, the life underwater. Then it affect everything under the water. Okay, and we on the land, even more uh, risk because of the carbon and the rest. Okay, if uh, just a quick one, seventy percent of the greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas come from the fossil fuel. Okay, fossil fuel is the, where we we drive car, we got uh fuel, uh benzene, and then uh, uh electricity. When uh they generate electricity, they use coal. Uh, they use many fossil fuel. So uh this contribute to seventy percent of greenhouse gas that damage our world. So the future leaders, future um people like you all become future leaders. You need to understand these things through various angles and we at INSEF we offer you Islamic finance as the solution of world problem okay next please okay if you look at Islamic finance we have many solutions like ethical and social considerations at INSEF we are actively doing this and then sustainable investment zakat charitable fund microfinance and business small business support and work up fund. If you do some homework, you search for Islamic Finance Focus University. And INSEF is the only university that have staff that specialize in various areas in Islamic finance. Whatever I mentioned on screen, we have staff that specialize in this area. And the staff not only specialize in academic, our staff also do projects with industry, go to the ground, practice what the theory that they discuss in papers. Okay, I, I just pick up a few examples like uh, um, Islamic social finance. We have one staff who really go to the ground, work with banks, work with the society, doing projects on Islamic social finance. Wakaf, we have uh, uh, Professor Magda who go around and do Wakaf project and, and many more. We will see later on. Okay, next. And... Uh, 
Islamic social responsible investing, supporting food security, ethical banking and finance, educational financing and community development. All this issue we need to deep, deep dive discuss, debate, look at the practices. So at INSEF, we offer all this as part of our education. Okay, next, please. And when we talk about future education, INSEF and institution, we carefully design our curriculum to make sure that our curriculum are adaptable, means that we adapt to the industry needs and relevant. Later on, okay, I will discuss on a unique module that we have. In Malaysia, I would consider we have on, only two uh, universities have this, and one of it is INSAF, where we empower students to, to uh, explore the knowledge. Uh, we, we put this uh, module at the end, normally at uh, your your uh, second last semester or last semester where you already learn many Islamic finance, many sustainability modules. And then at that semester, you're going to be student consultant. So as a consultant, you need to make decision. Lecturer will not come in. Lecturer only become your coach. Okay. So at INSEF, we work with industry, we find project, industry give real project, and then you as a student in a group of three, four, or five students, you're going to think about solution for the industry. In order to do that, you're going to pull your knowledge that you learn in semester one, semester two, semester three, semester four, and then you're going to go out, see the stakeholders. Okay. It is not classroom, not theoretical only. I mean, you bring in all your theoretical knowledge, you go to the, the, the field, you meet all the, the uh, stakeholders, meeting them, find information, and then you go back to the drawing board, design solution for the industry. So I will discuss on that later on. We have slides on that. And then uh, our program must be relevant. That's why we design our program. We update our program from time to time. And for your information, we are accredited by AACSB. Okay. Uh, if you know this is international and not many business schools have this and uh, Islamic Finance University, INSEF is the only Islamic Finance University that got AACSB for now. Because not many Islamic Finance University have after all. Okay? So we have that AACSB. So AACSB set a very high standard for us to, to make sure that the learning uh, journey, learning experience by students will be at certain standard. Okay? So... Um, that's why I, 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 I focus on adaptability and relevance where INSEF are accredited by uh, ACSB as well as Malaysian accreditation body, which is MQA. So with these two accreditation, accreditation uh, I'm very sure that our uh, education standards is somewhere up there. Uh, we are global players. And then global perspective, um, in, in Islamic finance, we are among the top uh, universities in the world. If you look at uh, 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 industry publication, INSEF uh, arm, which is uh, Israq Consultancy, our research arm, we are number one for many, many years. And INSEF University are in the rank, the top three uh, universities, education education provider in Islamic finance. This is uh, given by uh, IFN and, and, and some other uh, institutions. Okay. And then digital learning, if you, you uh, dig information on um, the, the uh, uh, artificial intelligence, the, uh, the role of uh, te information technology in education, 
all that should be blend in in education to make sure that student are at the forefront and at INSEF we use technology in education and and for student that have lack of background or no background in Islamic finance we have kind of uh modules that available online that you can uh, follow like we have micra we develop a uh, uh, modules online for the student to understand on Islamic finance and many other disciplines. Okay. Um, all right. Next. Uh, practical experience, I will discuss on action-based learning. As I mentioned earlier, that student consultant, that is action-based learning module. Uh, in Malaysia, we have only two uh, universities that have uh, uh, action-based learning. Action-based learning is not practical training or not industrial training. You are not attached to any company for six months. No, no, no. ABL is not that. ABL is a student consultant. Means you address industry problem. Uh, you will visit the stakeholders, but you are not stationed at their office. It is not stationed at your office. You're just like a normal consultant. But uh, in ABL, in this module, you are guided by two um, um, uh, experts. We call it as industry experts, mean the people from the industry as well as academic expert. Uh, research innovation, yeah, uh, INSEF, we are at the forefront of uh, research and innovation of Islamic finance and lifelong learning. Um, at INSEF, we are not spoon-fed students. Uh, students, when they go through the uh, educational experience at INSEF, most of them appreciate or all of them appreciate where it is a lifelong learning process where you are learn how to get information, learn how to learn, okay, how to prepare yourself rather than being spoon-fed, go to exam, pass the exam, forget everything. No, at INSEF, it is first-hand experience. You learn the thing through your exploration. All right, next, please. Okay, program. Okay, next. Uh, we have PhD program and we have three types of PhD program. We have PhD in Islamic finance through coursework. Coursework means you have to, to take uh, modules, uh, certain credit hours, you have to take it and then you have to prepare dissertation. Uh, we have a second program, which is PhD in Islamic finance by research. This is purely research. Okay, starting from uh, January semester, we, we already refine our program. As I mentioned earlier, we look at the industry needs, we look at everything, all factors, and then we, we from time to time, we improve our program. So starting from next year, we're going to have PhD program with minimum number of modules, and then students have to straight away do the research after they complete their modules. And uh, minimum uh, two years, maximum four years for full-time student. For part-time student, four years and maximum five years. Um, this depends um, uh, on, on student. If you are focused, you, you uh, manage your time right, you have good communication with your supervisor, three years is manageable. Three years is manageable or in, in uh, academic, we call it uh, graduate on time, GOT, graduate on time. We we expect, we are happy with students that can graduate within three years. But some students take more years, uh, I mean, four years, five years. It is not because of they are not clever, but it is because they need more time to think, more time to explore. They will learn more. Uh, that's it. So this is the time that we have. And then industrial PhD, this is normally for for uh, Top Gun means that the C suit uh, that uh, that uh, uh, achieve at certain level of their career, they can come in and apply for industrial PhD. The difference between industrial PhD and the other PhD, PhD by coursework or PhD by research is that industrial PhD normally they, they, they will do research on the industry. They normally look at the industry problem and then they they will address the industry problem. Okay. Uh, the duration four to five years. Okay, next. 
master in Islamic finance practice and master in Islam uh, master science in Islamic finance. Okay, more or less these two program, the content of the modules uh, about the same, uh, but the difference between the two master in Islamic finance practice uh, will focus on the industry uh, needs industry requirement so the discussion more towards apply the the theoretical to the industry you are looking at the industry problems and you you work on certain projects uh, on the industry on the other hand master of science in islamic finance focus more towards theoretical because we prepare master science in islamic finance towards phd so if the student graduated with Master of Science in Islamic Finance, they apply for PhD, they normally will get some exemption. They normally will, it is an easy route for them to, to go for PhD program. Not to say that MIFP, Master in Islamic Finance Practice, cannot go to the uh, PhD program. They can. There are students that uh, apply for PhD program uh, when they graduated from MIFP, they are, but uh, uh, the level of concentration, coverage of uh, certain modules uh, are different between the two uh, programs. Uh, if you look at the time frame uh, for MIFP, their full time is minimum one year, maximum two years, part time one and a half years, maximum four years. This is very quick because uh, if you realize that one year is just a short time now, right? Very fast. Uh, if you look for master science in Islamic finance, full time two years, maximum three years, part time two years, maximum four years. Okay, next please. MBA Sustainable Business. This is not an Islamic finance program, but uh, the issues that they cover, some of the module they cover also Islamic finance. Okay, But this program more towards sustainability, Okay, MBA sustainability. Um, uh, this module, this program, uh, um have a, a very uh, rich information on sustainability where uh, you will have uh, about nine modules on the normal uh, functional areas like uh, risk like uh, data analytic like uh, human uh, resource managing people okay uh, that is the uh, the module, the general modules, and we have specialization modules that is focused on uh, sustainability and social finance. And then uh, the student will do ABL and others. I will go on in detail on that. All right. Executive Master in Islamic Finance, this is for online students. If you have limitation to, to travel, Okay, it may be because of your job commitment, you are not willing to give up your job, but you still want to equip yourself with the cutting edge knowledge offered by INSEF. Okay, INSEF offer executive master in Islamic finance. Okay, the, the quality, the concentration, it is about the same as the other face to face program. I mean, MIFP, Master Islamic Finance Practice, uh, MSc. Uh, Master Science in Islamic Finance MBA, uh, it is about the same, okay. But IMIF, Executive Master in Islamic Finance, you can study at your end. Means that because of you can't leave your country due to maybe family reason, or because of career or many other things. But but uh, you have to remember that Executive Master in Islamic Finance, it is more on self learning. So the engagement with the faculty, the engagement with the university would be uh, um, a bit less. Okay, there, there are engagement for each module. There are engagement means that you you will have meeting with your face to uh, sorry online meeting with your uh, lecturers or faculty members. Uh, the only thing is the the frequency, the numbers of meeting is not the same as the face to face. Right, so full time for IMIF 
executive master in Islamic finance, minimum one year, maximum two years. For part-time, minimum three years, maximum six years. All right, next. And for corporate players or business uh, owners, entrepreneurs, uh, or you are part of the team in, in a business or you are workers, Okay, quote unquote workers. If you 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 have limitation to to enroll full program, yeah, uh, everybody have their own commitment, right? You may have commitment at office. You cannot travel. You cannot take full uh module. Means that you cannot uh due to some limitation you cannot take IMIF. Then uh, inside we offer. Professional Certificate in Islamic Finance, this is from IMIF, and Professional Certificate from MBA, Sustainable Business. What is this? I just give you general analogy. If you have cake, you want to sell one big cake, okay, let's say the price of the cake is $20, and then you want to sell $20 cake, big cake to a person, that person said that I have limitation to consume this cake because of I, I stay with my partner, two person only, I cannot eat the whole piece of cake, then can you sell me one piece? So at INSEF, the same as the cake analogy, we slice our program into smaller component. We call it as professional certificate in Islamic finance. If you are interested in wealth management, for example, then uh, you can take professional certificate in wealth management. So we have three modules under each areas, each uh, area of specialization. And you take that three modules and then you will get professional certificate in bracket, in hypothesis, uh, in, in bracket, uh, wealth management. Okay. Um, if let's say taking three modules also, you have limitation because of time, because of some other commitment, we offer uh, uh, micro certification next. Micro certification from IMIF. Micro certification is we slice one module as one piece of cake. Means that from let's say twelve modules for for IMIF, we 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 slice it one by one. So you take one module after one module after one module. You can also take just one and then you take a rest. After that, you take another one. Okay, that is micro certification it means you take only one module, you pass, you get certificate for micro certification. And we have two segments, which is micro certification from EMIF and micro certification from sustainable business. Okay, taking courses offered by INSAF and then you completed with uh, some condition, means the grade must be B and above you can apply for exemption if you want to take full program. What I mean is that after you take one uh, micro certification, one module, and then you feel that, oh, I like it. Uh, I like to study at INSEF. Then with the, the micro certification, let's say you already took one, and then you want to apply for full EMIF program, you can apply for exemption for the courses that uh you uh uh you you already uh enroll okay okay so uh we can give exemption on the module that you already taken okay next please all right this is the the um the credit hours if you look there i just go through quickly because uh no need for us to memorize the numbers uh, once you enroll, then you you will, will get all this information. Okay, uh, for PhD we have uh uh this kind of uh credit hours, and then uh, uh MSc extreme right on the red color we have uh twenty seven credit for core core course. Okay, and then elective nine, project six. Okay, next please. This is for MBA. MBA, we have uh, 46 credit hours, where 30 core course, specialization 10, 6 project paper. 
uh, MIP about the same number of credit hours. Okay, 42, a bit less. But uh, MIP, uh, IMI, sorry, IMIF, we have uh, 18, 12, and then uh, 12 for project paper. Uh, this is online. Okay, and IMIF is online. All right, next. Okay, program detail. I will uh, pick up certain information that uh, you may want to know. For PhD, you need to, this is mixed mode or coursework based. You have to take a compulsory course, all the, the courses that listed on the first part of the table, plus dissertation and then two elective. Okay, next. Uh, this is study plan, how we divide it into semester. So this is the menu that we give to you. Some of you want to uh, do some changes. So that is administration, administrative issue. When you enroll, we will discuss that. Okay, next. Okay, this is the uh, PhD by research. Okay, in starting from uh, next year, PhD by research, you will only take the research methodology plus seminars. I mean, seminar in finance, seminar in economics, and seminar in Sharia. The rest, mathematical methods, Islamic capital market, Islamic banking, it is not compulsory. Okay, but if your supervisor think that you need certain knowledge in certain area, then they will ask you to take uh, uh, the other modules. Uh, at university level, level, we only require you to take seminars and research methodology. Okay, next. Um, this is for industrial PhD. Okay, they have to take uh, research methodology and only one seminar course. Okay, next. For MSc, if you look there, they are compulsory course. What interesting is action-based learning. Okay, you couldn't find in, in other UST. Uh, that's why I said earlier, look at the world problem. The world are now facing uh, the, the global warming, the climate change, poverty, uh, social imbalances, uh, uh, life on land at threat, life underwater at threat. So you will specialize into whatever area that uh, you choose based on project that we offer. Okay, every year we will we will search, we will find industry partner. Uh, for example, we have worked with Atis Crowd in Indonesia, uh, where students work on um, uh, uh, affordable housing in, in Jakarta. We work with uh, QSR brand. QSR brand is the one with uh, fried chicken. Okay, so uh, uh, students visit the facility, come up with uh, suggestion on what to report in their sustainability report. Okay, uh, we have project with the Langkawi port. Langkawi is an island at northern part of the country where they plan to open up another port and our student coming in as a consultant uh, look at various issues like uh, whether it is sustainable, whether it is uh, um, any social issue and, and many others. So... Uh, there are many projects. Uh, later, I will I will show you our slides on action based learning, and then the project paper. Project paper is is a capstone. Capstone means that you're going to pull all your knowledge in the prior semesters, and you're going to conduct your own research. It is a self driven research, but there are some monitoring where we have a uh, project paper committee that uh, that. Uh, evaluate your performance, okay? So you're going to do your own research in the area that you like. Some students like, uh, I just give you an example of my student. One of my students interested to do on sustainability and development financial institution. So this student explore on this issue, meeting the industry, uh, industry people and write uh, a, a project paper or we can call a thesis, a mini thesis on whatever uh, research that you undertaken. 
So this is where you you interested on certain area, you put in writing, you drive the information discovery, you write your findings. So this two module is a capstone where you pull your knowledge, not only what you learn in itself actually, it is throughout your experience in uh, your career, and then you put in action-based learning and project paper, uh, like a simple one, writing emails to your, your stakeholders. It is not easy, you know, to write an email, to conduct a meeting with your industry partner, the professional outside there. Uh, so you learn a lot from A to Z. Okay, and you have to take three uh, course. Okay, next. Um, this is the the uh, areas you you may choose for your specialization. Next, uh, this is how we structure according to semester. You will take around twelve credit hours, but uh, it is based on yeah uh, your 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 available time. So that is more on administrative. We will discuss later. Most of the students follow what we plan. Uh, as shown on the screen. Okay, next. Um, this is uh, part-time students. They take lesser credits. Okay, next. For MIFP, if you look here on the screen, you will have uh, action-based learning together with other modules. And you have to select three uh, elective. Uh, uh, there are numbers of uh, very interesting uh, modules, okay, uh, accounting for Islamic finance, Islamic banking, up to audit and compliance. Audit and compliance more on Sharia audit, and uh, finally we have social finance. Also, this is not many universities offer social finance. This is Islamic social finance. Okay, next. This is uh, the study plan. If you look there, your action-based learning in, in semester three, where you already learn many basic information like economic data analytics, Sharia aspect, ethics, strategy. So when you come to semester three, you start putting on paper, putting into action what you have learned, and now you learn more, okay, not from the book, but from the world. Okay, and then project paper in the last semester. This is really pulling all your knowledge, put on paper as part of your research project. Okay, next. All right, this is how we structure according to semester. Okay, next. Um, MBA Sustainable Business. Uh, this is very interesting program and, and people like this program uh, uh, where you will learn a lot from the compulsory course. It is not as what you learn in undergraduate, you know. Uh, when you are in undergraduate, it is more towards one-way communication. The lecturers stand up there, talk to you, and then uh, when we ask questions, everybody quiet. In our class, it is very live. Uh, student who uh, who are uh, 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 means our student have their their prior experience they work in various industry they come to the class they will talk uh, on uh, a lot of issues they relate to the what they learn in the class uh, take one example like business strategy it is not a theoretical class it we have a lot of case study in business strategy so you're going to apply your knowledge one question doesn't mean you can have to one angle to address it. The answer is only one way. Sometimes you might see that the answer is wrong, but when you argue it, it may be right. Okay, so so the class at INSEF is very live. You you can express your whatever experience, prior experience, and get more information because our professors are the one who have industry experience, the one who conduct consultancy, the one who have uh, industry experience. I will show you our, our uh, teaching staff later on. If you look there, we got action-based learning for MBA and we require MBA students to take 
action based learning where the project is sustainability project means that they really work on sustainability for example um student look at sustainability reporting student look at the uh, affordable housing and, and many more Okay, uh, student look at, uh, we have one project where one bank, they have uh, zakat money, they work with the uh, local council, the Kuala Lumpur council, and do a project with the B40. B40 do some farming activities, so our student do some information gathering and some suggestion. We also work with the zakat, Kedah, Kedah is a northern state, where they have B40 activity, they 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 uh they have uh, uh the B40 do some uh, plantation activities, and our student look at the projects, uh, the selection of the B40, look at the improvement of the life of the B40, and and many more. Okay, okay. And, and uh, sorry, can, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Prof. Sorry to interrupt uh, you. For for the context for those who are joining internationally, can you just briefly explain what is B forty? Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. We we cluster the society in Malaysia and and some other countries. We cluster the society into minimum uh three uh, different clusters. Okay. We have top twenty means the rich one. Uh. In Malaysia, the uh, those with uh, uh income. Uh, the household income more than uh, if I'm second twelve thousand uh, and above, uh, they are classified as T twenty, uh, and then we have middle group M forty, M forty it is uh, between uh six thousand to twelve thousand or some say that around three thousand to twelve thousand. It depends. I think nowadays the cost is very high. Cost of living it is six thousand to twelve. And then below than that, it is bottom 40. So this bottom 40, they have challenges to live in big city. They have challenges to live in, yeah, even though it is not big city, with the salary, with the household income around 3,000, nothing much you can do. Okay. And, and, and there are many of them. Okay. If you look, it is just like a pyramid. Okay. Uh, so, uh, action-based learning, looking at various uh, issues, various projects. And then if you look there, we have a specialization course. We have sustainability management, sustainability and supply chain, and social finance. And finally, you're going to pull all your knowledge, what you learn in class, semester one, semester two, semester three, semester four, in your project paper. This is very uh, independent work you're going to do on your own. We empower you to, to, to learn as much as you can to put on paper what is your observation, what is your examination, and write a research report. Okay, So you will work with your own choice supervisor. Okay, If you prefer people like uh, certain professors, certain characteristics, you approach the professor and you you uh, you express your intention to do on certain area research on certain area and if the professor agree then yeah you in an engagement conduct your your research and you, you have to remember that research is not a textbook research is not uh, something that require you to write on certain area you cannot write certain area if you your research find certain thing which is being practiced but not right, so be it. You can express your knowledge, express your opinion in the project paper, but with your communication with your supervisor, of course, the supervisor will guide you, right? So it is very interesting process where uh, uh, project paper pool all your knowledge. But remember, something good, something interesting doesn't mean easy. Okay, so you need to 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 work uh, on this. It, it is not just relax and then uh, something will come. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I would consider MBA Sustainable Business. This is our new program. We have around two years uh, already offered this program. This is really competitive, really interesting. Okay, next. Okay, this is how we structure uh, on semester basis. Okay, next. 
this is part time. They take take less uh, modules, less credits. Okay. Okay. Next. Imif. Okay. If you are busy with your life, you you are uh you cannot leave your career. You cannot leave your country. You cannot leave your family uh, due to some reason. Then Imif is a good option. And we are not diluting the program, okay? Uh, whatever you take in IMIF is the same as whatever we have in campus. If you look, some of the module uh, is the same as what uh, MIFP and MSC uh, take for their program. Okay, if you look there, compulsory course, we have ethics and professionalism. If you realize uh, our MBA also have ethics and professionalism, data analytic, economics. Okay, uh, there are some unique uh, modules here. And then you have to take four elective course and then you have to write project paper. The difference here is since you are remote from the campus, okay, you are online student, then we are unable to do action-based learning. But you still have the opportunity to do project paper. You can work with our experts, uh, with the campus to do projects, to look into the practices, to bring in the theoretical knowledge into the uh, project and then come up with your research findings. So uh, this is really interesting, exciting journey. Okay, next. This is the, the study plan, means according to semester. Okay, next, please. Uh, this is part-time. All right, next. PCIF, as I mentioned earlier, Professional Certificate Islamic Finance is a, 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 a program or a certificate where we slice our main program, like here, IMIF, Executive Master Islamic Finance, we slice it into smaller components. You will take three modules and then you will get Professional Certificate Islamic Finance Banking, Sharia, Capital Market, Wealth Management, Sharia Audit. We have uh, many experience in this. Students uh, come and take uh, uh, PCIF on their own or Companies can work with us. Any of the audience, if you think that your company really need this knowledge, your team, we have one company in Kuala Lumpur, big investment company, national investment company, uh, um, work with us, discuss, and then they agree to enroll about 40 of their staff, 30 plus of their staff from internal audit and various departments to take the Sharia audit and compliance. We have a class at their, their setup, their resources at their company. And plus, they need some online. We just give online. Okay. So, this PCIF and the IMIF is totally online. Sorry. Uh, the, uh, the other segment is face-to-face. Uh, -face. So, you can suggest to your company, any of the audience, if you think that your company really did this knowledge, bring this information or screenshot what I show you here, suggest to your company, we can work out. Okay, we can work out on any of the discipline. And the beauty of this is that you are invited to our convocation. So once you completed, you will receive the certificate on stage during our convocation. That is the best. Okay, okay next, please. This is PCI, Professional Certificate MBA Sustainable Business. Let's say your company or you yourself would like to gain knowledge in areas that related to sustainability, then you can choose any of the professional certificate on screen. It can be sustainability and innovation, finance and analytics, uh, leadership or sustainable organization certificate uh, in economy policy. So this is very interesting. You can on your own or you can uh, request your company come in group. Okay, maybe the whole the whole group is yours or maybe three, four people enroll to the program. All right. Um, uh, next, please. Uh, this is the, the micro certification. You can take any of the modules. All right. Okay, next. 
Uh, this is uh, from MBA Sustainable Business, just now from IMIF. Uh, remember, IMIF, Executive Master Islamic Finance, uh, they are, the modules from that uh, track is online uh, uh, online uh, base. Okay. For MBA, it is a face-to-face. -face. means that if you enroll uh, micro-certification, uh, for example, for MBA, like social finance, then you need to come to the campus uh, for that. All right, next, please. This is a small requirement for those who uh, take um, full program, MBA, MSc, MIFP, PhD. Uh, you have to pass Islamic theology course, okay? Uh, but uh, it is not compulsory for MBA sustainable business. Sorry, uh, not compulsory for MBA sustainable business, but for the rest, um, because of some administration uh, with the uh, accreditation body, okay? MBA not fall under Islamic finance. That's why MBA sustainable business not required to take Islamic theology. The rest have to take Islamic theology. All right. Um, need to pass seventy percent. It is it is simple one. We have a workshop on it actually. Okay, all right. Uh, so, um, you minimum pass seventy percent. I I think so far there is no failure. Everybody passed this. It is quite easy. Okay, next please. Okay, action based learning. As I mentioned earlier, it is easy for you to visualize. It is just like a consultant. You are a consultant in our program. What consultant? You going to meet our industry partner looking for uh, what problem that they have. Actually, we already agreed. We already have prior meeting with the industry partner. Okay. And then uh, the industry, for example, okay, I, I just give you an example. Uh, we have one project last two semester where uh, this is a cable car from uh, the level zero, the cable car go up to the mountain in Langkawi. Okay, Langkawi is an island at the northern part. Okay, that cable car uh, provides service to the, the, the tourists, to the visitors from level zero to the top, the mountain top. Now, their issue is that whether the customer that uh, subscribe the services, enjoy the services, go up to the mountain, will come back. Means that will do a uh, uh, next purchase, will visit Langkawi again. So they are not sure on that. Why they, 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 they require consultant to look into that matter? Uh, their issue is that it is a long queue when there are peak uh, period. During holidays, the queue is quite long and, and people have to wait for some time. Then they want to know uh, what is the customer feeling on waiting so long, what the customer feel about their facility, about the attractions up there. So this is where our consultant, student consultant coming in and talk to various people, even talk to the customer they have to travel to the north means they got free ride uh, means go to go to the site and then take the cable car ride up to the mountain meeting people various party the industry partner itself uh, talking to the customer talking to the workers and and various stakeholders and then they come back with the data they they do a lot of discussion okay sorry, right. prof, sorry so, to cut you off uh, we've got five more minutes Okay, all right. Okay, I'll do this quick. Okay, next, please. This is among the partners that we have. We have uh, many years' experience. We have a lot. It is very interesting. You will not find in any other universities. Okay, and I strongly recommend. I have 48 here, minus staff around 40 or 30 plus. I think this is, you are at the right time, right place. This is where... Uh, you should grab the opportunity, learn at INSEF, you have the opportunity to meet the industry and solve their problem. Okay, next, please. 
this is just example the project that student have you see they are at the field at the paddy paddy field they are at the b40 the bottom 40 project that they have uh plantation there okay next please um there are many many projects that we have so far this is all our testimony next please Uh, this is our industry partner. Etika is a takaful company and, and many more there. If you look there, some students work on blockchain, some students work on investment account with banks. Okay, next please. This is our resources, the last part. Okay, um, in, in faculty member. Um, the faculty is led by Deputy President Academic and Dean, Professor Dr. Manso. He specialized in... Um, uh, monetary economy. We have Professor Dr. Aisha Muniza. This is former Deputy Minister in Maldives. You look, look here, the kind of people that we have. We have high profile, we have experienced people. Professor Dr. Aisha was the Deputy Minister in Maldives. Okay, so she worked on a lot of projects. She is one of the, the, the person that set up Something like Malaysia, we have Tabung Haji or the Pilgrimage Fund. She set up the Pilgrimage Fund in Maldives and she worked everywhere in the world uh, on, on many projects. Okay, And myself here, uh, I'm, I'm in accounting and, and I, I do a lot of uh, consultancy, a lot of projects. I was an accountant. Uh, uh, so uh, we have Professor Shamsi there, down there. Professor Shamsi was my lecturer. Okay, You see... Uh, all is gold uh, with wealth of experience come to INSEF to contribute. Professor Ubaytullah, a very senior guy. Professor Dr. Said Hamid, also senior guy here. All right, next please. Um, we have former Deputy Governor of Turkey. Okay, Professor Dr. Turale was the Deputy Governor of Turkey, now working in INSEF. Uh, Professor Dr. Bahrom is a social finance guy, do a lot of projects on social finance. Professor Dr. Magda is a uh, uh, lady, work a lot on, on Wakaf. And then Professor Dr. Tarikullah, award winner of IDB, Islamic Development Bank. He worked a lot on, on circular economy. Azam Shah is well known in Takaful in Malaysia, was the president of Takaful Society. And then we have Dr. Firuz. Dr. Ziad, well-known consultant, uh, and uh, Dr. Kinan uh, Haji Rahman was bankers, and then Dr. Zhang. I forget to mention, but I don't have time here. Uh, many of our our uh, faculty member who is also either board of directors of banks or institution or Sharia committee of many institution like Dr. Ziad and, and many of them. Okay, next please. Um, we are not only have academic staff who are specialized in research, teaching, we also invite practitioner, mark, uh, uh, industry captain as our academic support. We, we give them uh, this position. We have four uh, professors of practice. This is, if you are Malaysian, you will know these people. Uh, uh, Miss Suryanim is the the pioneer in Islamic finance. Uh, involved a lot of suku issuance. Tansi Abdul Wahid currently is the chairman of stock exchange. Datuk Muhammad Nasir is the chairman of CIMB Group. Datuk Muhammad Hussein was the CFO, the biggest bank in Malaysia, and now become directors of many boards. Last time seven or eight uh, public listed. Now. Uh, four public students. And we have adjunct professor, we have seven actually. We have only four on here. Uh, Rifki now with the Central Bank of Indonesia. Hamidi is, is Bank Muhammad uh, Adhari. Okay, next please. Uh, our team, just quick one. Next. Uh, this is the people. You know both of them at the top. The bottom, we were, we have one Halina. This is the, the lady that managed the school. Uh, I may normally talk to the student on on various issues. Okay, next. And we have on the student and internationalization, you will see uh, uh, each of them, uh, like Aziana, uh, Sharifa, Lily, Amira. Uh, they, they have their own role at, at school. Okay, next, please. 
And action-based learning, this is where you will learn a lot and these people are the one responsible looking for project, offer you the project and do all the examination, etc., etc. Next, please. Thank you very much. I think I take a lot of time uh, today. Uh, if you have question, then you can post the question. Okay, how are we going to do this, um, Din? So we, alhamdulillah, we've gotten uh, more than 30 questions already. And Not our sure team well. have been have been busy answering them, alhamdulillah. So uh, I think uh, let's not keep uh, our next presenter waiting. All right. Uh, so, but at the end of the session, after uh, Miss Nissa's uh, presentation, I will open the floor to... Uh, to our participants to ask any uh, questions verbally. Just raise your hand. Uh, and then I will I stay will online. Them. Okay, proceed. Yes, please thank do. You very much, please do, Dave. Prof. Don't run away. Over to you. Uh, all right. So uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Prof, for that very uh, in-depth look at INSEF, our, our programs, as well as uh, the career paths available uh, after uh, you graduate, inshallah, at, at INSEF. Now, uh, in our next session will be will be talking about the financial and scholarships uh, aids available here at INSEF University. Should you want to choose to continue doing uh, continue your studies to further your studies here with us at INSEF University. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the director of the student the registries and uh, student registry and student services department. Excuse me. Uh, it is almost 10 p.m. Excuse me, uh, <laughs> Miss Nisa Hairudin. Over to Thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Azizin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is still with me. Um, if you need to take a a, a small, you know, a short bio break, uh, please do so. Uh, while I start the the introduction, uh, and whatnot. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Nisa from uh, Registry and Student Services. Um, I'm hoping to address, um, not address, I'm hoping to present to you some of the information on uh, scholarship and financial assistance that we have here at INSEF, offered by INSEF. Uh, and uh, if there are any questions pertaining to uh, students' uh, life at INSEF on campus, uh, online, uh, we are uh, here to answer. Um, I also have my colleagues uh, who are online who's able to answer all the questions, inshallah. Uh, any uh, questions uh, in regards to your admissions, uh, to your um, registrations, uh, to your uh, accommodations, if any, if you are looking into uh, accom uh, student accommodations, um, uh, if you have any questions regarding your uh, student visa for international students, uh, and please do so, uh, chat away in the um, chat box, uh, and we'll uh, try our best to assist, inshallah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's start. I will share with you my screen. I'll start with this. Right. So on behalf of uh, INSEF um, management, uh, we welcome you to INSEF uh, University. Uh, although this is just a virtual session, uh, so if you are, if you happen to be in Kuala Lumpur, either uh, for work or for 
um, holiday, uh, do drop by uh, to INSEAF campus. Uh, you can bring you around to, uh, to to um, you know, to our humble um site on campus. Inshallah, then you will be able to see your classes, your halls, uh, and um, and the surroundings. Now, uh, if I can share with, uh, with you just a, a short process of our admission process, I um, saw some questions on the admission process, how long it takes um, uh, and whatnot. So this is mainly the snapshot of the whole admission process. Uh, you uh, will apply online. Um, we only accept online application uh, from uh, NCF um, uh, website. Uh, and it will fall into one system, uh, which is the online application form. So once we receive your form, of course, we will do doc document vetting. And this is where the selection screening will start. So uh, 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 if you pass all the, um, the screenings that we have for your uh, preferred programs or your uh, chosen programs, then you will get direct offer. Uh, and there are programs such as PhD programs or selected master's candidate, you will be approached uh, by uh, my colleagues in the School of uh, Graduate Professional Studies to, uh, uh, in, to be interviewed by us. So this is part of, again, this is part of the selection screening. Then uh, there will be a decision. So whether you are uh, offered a seat uh, for our program or you are being declined uh, from uh, the uh, admissions. So if you are offered, um, then uh, there's uh, two, uh, you know, situation. Uh, if you are applying for face-to-face -face, face -face programs and you are an international candidate, then we will kick off your um, visa application where you will remit the necessary fees uh, to apply for your student pass. Uh, and then we will submit the student pass application to EMGS. EMGS stands for Education Malaysia Global Services. Uh, this is the um, um, the one-stop uh, center by the ministry uh, to process all student uh, pass applications uh, from all universities in Malaysia. Then uh, you will, uh, you know, have to wait for a, a, a while until you receive your uh, electronic visa approval letter. Then you will kick off, you know, the process of coming to Kuala Lumpur uh, next year. Uh, if you are a local candidate, so once you have been offered uh, a place, then you only have to remit the necessary fees. This, the necessary fees, then we can uh, immediately enroll you into the program. Now, uh, let me go straight to um, the summary of the financial aids that we have here. Uh, mainly, we have uh, these four categories of um, um, financial aid. The first one is bursary and financial aid. Um, this is uh, more or less like a financial assistance in nature, uh, meaning to uh, assist you financially um, for those who uh, are eligible for the um, uh, assistance. Uh, applicable for all programs except for uh, the short programs, uh, that is PCIF and M micro certificate. For President's Scholarship, uh, this uh, particular scholarship is for our master's students who uh, uh, who will be undergoing our on-campus face-to-face programs. That is uh, master in, uh, Master's in Islamic Finance Practice, MIFP, Master of Science in Islamic Finance, MSc, and also MBA in Sustainable Business. So if you intend to apply any one of these uh, masters, uh, we encourage you to apply to President's Scholarship as well. Uh, and this is for Chancellor. The next one is Chancellor Scholarship. If you intend to apply for a PhD in Islamic Finance, regardless whether it's by research or by coursework in dissertation, uh, then you can apply for Chancellor Scholarship. I will go through the details after this. And we also have the last one is Lead Scholarship. And Lead Scholarship for those uh, who wanted to apply for Executive Masters in Islamic Finance. And this is an online program. Now. Okay. Now let me start with lead program for uh IMIF pro uh, IMIF um, um program. So lead scholarship. Uh, this is exclusively for Malaysian candidates. Um, uh, if you are an uh, an applicant or guardians with income up to uh four thousand eight hundred forty nine uh, ringgit, you are eligible to apply. Uh, this is open to Malaysian ASNAF who have completed uh your bachelor's degree or currently in last semester or year. 
uh, mode of study has to be full time and online, and the duration of study should be one and a half years. So if you are if you intend to apply, then this is the contact details um that you can contact. Um, there is a form that uh the uh the the person in charge will will uh will email to you. Please ignore the address here. This is the old address. My apologies for not updating uh this particular address to the current one. So this is uh, not the current uh, campus address. The current campus address is in uh, Jalan Tun Ismail in Kuala Lumpur. Now, next one is uh, scholarship. I will start with um, PhD uh, Chancellor's Scholarship. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, the most, um, I would say, um, prestigious scholarship that we have uh, so far at NCF. Uh, what I meant prestigious is it's highly competitive. Uh, and extremely competitive uh, and um, the the panel is uh, extremely selective uh, and this is mainly because um, the um, candidates who have um, been uh, who have op not obtained who have been offered or accepted the offer in the past have pretty much set the benchmark for the future, um, what you call it, uh, holders uh, 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 of this particular scholarship. So even though you meet the minimum criteria here for us to go through the um, uh, the screening process for scholarship, but it doesn't guarantee you that you will get uh, a scholarship. So um, it is um, the one of the reason why uh, I say it's prestigious. One is uh, the scholarship coverage. It will cover your full tuition fees. It will cover your one of um uh, visa fees, uh, and also student services fee. Uh, and also on top of that, we will give you monthly stipend of two thousand five hundred ringgit for three years for thirty six months. So uh, we are hoping that um you know within the three years you are able to finish uh, the whole PhD program and uh, graduate uh, on time. Now, uh, what is the criteria? Of course, uh, we are looking for someone who is outstanding um, academically uh, and someone who has uh, some publications already uh, that will be much preferred. Uh, and normally during the selection, sorry, during the selection interview, uh, we will also ask what is your research experience um, you know, to gauge, you know, uh, to gauge how uh, well versed are you in the research interests that you have. Uh, and uh, also, we also, this is a tip. Um, sometimes we would love uh, to support uh, someone's dream. Uh, for example, if you have a particular research interest uh, and that research interest um, leads to a solution that will benefit the community at large, uh, that is something that we are really looking for because we know that by investing in you, we are investing to doing good for the future, inshallah. So, yeah, so um, um, uh, be ready uh, to be asked questions about, you know, your your research interests, your research uh, experience. Uh, we would like to know all that. If you are submitting your CV to us, and uh, please make sure that you uh, highlight your uh, previous publications. Uh, if you don't have any publication, but you have uh, co-write a chapter in the book, for example, if you have... Um, helped uh, uh, any research projects in the past, for example, put that in your CV clearly so that we know your um, research experience. Now, uh, most importantly, uh, if you are holding a Chancellor Scholarship, uh, you will be given a chance uh, to work as Graduate Academy Assistants. So GAA. So this is how we package it. Uh, if you are a GAA, that means that you will be attached to a professor and uh, you will be exposed to whatever um, uh, work that the professor is currently going through and also the network as well. So, for example, if the professor is uh, engaged in a research project, for example, then uh, your academic work starts from here, uh, uh, you know, uh, assisting work for the professor. And uh, sometimes, you know, you are able to be exposed to the uh, network in academia of, uh, that the professor has uh, and the industry, uh, industry collaborations that, they, that, in the, the, that the professor has as well, have as well. So that's a uh, Chancellor's Scholarship. Um, yeah. 
So next one is uh, President's Scholarship. Uh, this is a tuition fee waiver uh, scholarship uh, that we offer for um, the face-to-face -face programs, master's programs that we have at INSEAF. Uh, the first one is MSc in Islamic fi uh, Finance, Master of Science in Islamic Finance. The second one is Master's in Islamic Finance Practice, MIFP. And the third one is MBA in Sustainable Business. So um, uh, we don't cover... Uh, um, uh, stipend uh, for this particular scholarship, meaning we don't provide you the monthly um, um, stipend, uh, but we do cover your full tuition fees, your student services fee, and also visa fee, and this includes your medical checkup and taka full coverage. So, inshallah, if you are offered this scholarship, then make sure that you have the necessary amount to cover for your cost of living, inshallah. Now, the criteria, of course, we are looking for someone with good academic achievement, uh, minimum CGPA of 3.0 in bachelor's degree related field, uh, has been offered an admission to INSEAN master's program uh, as face-to-face -face mode of study, currently not receiving any form of financial aid or any scholarship, and must not exceed 40 years of age on application date. Now, I hope this is clear. Um, I will show you how to apply for both Chancellor's Scholarship and President Scholarship. You There is no separate application needed. How uh, to apply for this scholarship is basically part of your um, online application form when you are applying for the program. So let's say, for example, if you are applying for a Master's in Islamic Finance uh, Practice, MIFP program, then you will see this, you log on uh, to the online application form and then you will fill in all the um, sections accordingly and you will uh, come into one section called financial particulars. So under financial particulars, you choose scholarship uh, and uh, further choose applying for scholarship. So after you have chosen a drop-down menu of applying for scholarship, a list of scholarship programs will appear and you can choose President scholarship. So if we have any other scholarships offered for the program that you are applying, it will uh, uh it will appear there. For now, for MIFP, it will be in self president scholarship. If you are applying for PhD, then in self uh, chancellor scholarship will be there. If you are applying for EMIF, then you will not be seeing this because applying for EMIF, uh, you will um apply for other kind of uh, scholarship, not these two scholarship. I hope that's um, clear for now. Um, you can um, reply if you are clear or not clear in the uh, uh, the chat room. Uh, so as long as I know that you guys are still around. Um, it's quite late in Malaysia, but I hope it's not too late uh, for um, your section. Thank you, Nurul Fasiha. Okay, uh, can I proceed? Right. So once you have uh, submitted your application form with the uh, scholarship application, uh, then this is uh, what appears on your online application portal. It says here applications, uh, application status entry, your application is being processed, scholarship status applied. So internally, uh, what we will do is we will uh, proceed with your admission, uh, uh, sorry, with your application first meaning that the scholarship screening will only start once you have been given an offer letter. So, uh, meaning that uh, what, if you are not, um, if you are not able to secure any offer letter, we will not proceed with your scholarship application. So, as, I hope that's clear, yeah? Now, the next um, type is INSEAF Bursary. Uh, this is uh, financial assistance. Uh, it's a financial assistance scheme to help students who are in need uh, to pursue a higher education at INSEAF. Um, the uh, INSEAF bursary is on semester basis application, meaning that you have to apply every semester. So uh, you uh, this is open to new and current continuing student. For example, um, let's say uh, you have your own means uh, to... Um, to pay for your own fees uh, during the first uh, semester. And then uh, you do well, inshallah. Uh, and then second semester, something happens. Um, uh, maybe, you know, your savings uh, pretty much gone to the house renovation that you have been dreaming of. Example, it's just example. Uh, and you suddenly, you know, have a financial, um, 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 what you call it? Um, you felt that, you know, it's you have a limited financial um 
um, capability right now, you can apply for uh, financial assistance or insert bursary with us. So when you apply as a continuing student, uh, then um, we will assess all applications. Uh, and um, if you um, um, eligible uh, to, uh, to receive the financial assistance, you will receive only for that particular semester. So uh, a minimum of one paper, depending of how much we have in the fund. If we have more fund, then we will provide more coverage. If we have less fund, we will try to cover a minimum paper so that more people will enjoy the financial assistance. So uh, pray for us to be able to secure more uh, fund in the uh, in the in the in the bursary fund. Uh, so that we are that more students can enjoy the financial assistance, and again, this is open to new and current continuing student, uh, and this must be reapplied every semester. If you are interested to apply as a new student, uh, and uh, you can um snap on the uh, QR code here. This will lead you to the um online form to apply for NCF bursary. Uh, and uh, I think these um, slides will be shared with you by my colleagues from um, sales and marketing, inshallah. Then uh, you can have all this information um, accordingly if you need the link. Uh, if not, you can always snap the picture now uh, and you can uh, refer to it later. Yeah. Can I move on now? Yes? No? Yes. <laughs> Now, the last one is uh, Ishrif Zakat Financial Assistance. Um, this is, again, a financial assistance uh, in nature. Uh, and uh, this is for all students um, uh, who is um, uh, eligible to, uh, all students are eligible to apply. Uh, but of course, we do have, uh, internally, we do have some um, scoring that we do to ensure that you uh, fulfill the Fatifaya and other various factors such as number of dependents, household income and whatnot. Uh, again, because this is uh, assistance in nature, uh, then um, that's why uh, we cannot guarantee that you can get this assistance. Uh, but of course, we will look at your uh, form. The form to apply Ishrif is quite comprehensive uh, because we need to understand your background, your financial background especially, in order for you to uh, to uh, to enjoy the financial assistance. But uh, inshallah, uh, this will cover not just your tuition fees. If you have issues with your uh, rental, for example, if you have issues with, you know, uh, your your laptop suddenly suddenly went kaput and then you need to get it uh, fixed and you don't have the extra fund to uh, get it fixed. For example, you can always come to us and apply for this. Uh, the application will be assessed on a monthly basis and you have to apply before 15th of each month by 3 p.m. So, uh, uh, inshallah, every month uh, the committee, the scholarship committee will meet and uh, decide um who can uh, uh who is eligible, who are uh, who are uh, the applicants who are eligible to um be awarded uh, such assistance. Right, that's it. Um, that's the end of my presentation today. So, um, I'm not sure whether there's an answered uh, question here right so um let me take this question uh you graduated with bsc and msc economics with distinction respectively also i have written the gre uh, with a score of 3 to t uh, 2 3 to 3 no publication but i have research experience i want to apply for phd in like finance am i eligible for fully funded scholarship for phd uh, do apply um, um we would love to go through your application. Uh, we are hoping that we can meet uh, during one of those um, scholarship uh, interview, inshallah. Um, GRE is not um, the um, prerequisite uh, to apply for postgraduate programs at NCF, um, but uh, we'll take that into account. Um, however, um, we will still would love to know more about your research experience. Um, for example, um, during your MSc economics, uh, economics, uh, what have you written? Uh, you can always share that with us. Uh, sometimes your your project paper, your dissertation, or your mini thesis during your master's program do matters. 
uh, and you uh, if you have written uh, uh, any of this work um, uh, with your passion, I mean passionately, for example, you really wanted to find answer to any issue, for example, and you feel strongly about it, uh, you can always uh, share it with us and uh, we'll see whether uh, you can be the uh, holder for your Chancellor Scholarship, inshallah. Uh, Farhat Fasih Ula, you are saying that you want to join face to face program. Yeah, so I'm not sure uh, if you are uh, referring to um, masters or PhD, but if you are applying, if you are intending to do masters, then the face 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 to face programs would be um, MBA in sustainable in sustainable business. Masters in Islamic Finance Practice (MIFP) and uh, a Master of Science in Islamic Finance (MSc). Right? Yeah, three. Now, uh, what else? Uh, PCF applicants are eligible to apply for a shift. Yeah, yes, you are. You can apply. Uh, but again, uh, we will look into um, uh, your uh, background first before giving out uh such. Um, assistance but uh, so far uh, there is uh, an African who is a PhD sorry PCIF um, student who applied for the um, assistance from Ishrif um, can you please explain more on Ishrif Zakat Finance um, what do you want to know uh, on Ishrif Zakat maybe I can uh, answer further uh, and if I'm not able to answer, um, uh, you know, uh, in more clarity, I do have my colleagues here who probably be able to jump in and uh, help. Yeah, Fahad Fasih, yeah, Masters in Islamic Finance, inshallah. Uh, Masters in Islamic Finance Practice. So it's not MIF, it's MIFP. So uh, it's different. If you're talking about Master of Science in Islamic Finance, then we call it MSc. At Insia, we call it MSc. So there, there should be a clear distinction between MSc and MIFP. Uh, I hope you understood that during uh, Prof. Zul's, um, uh presentation earlier. Job prospect for sustainable business graduates. Wow, okay. Um, if Prof is still around, maybe Prof can take the this uh, question. I'm not sure whether Prof is still around, but I can try to attempt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Prof is still maybe around. Maybe you can put down your screen. your slides. Put down your mind. Okay. Sorry. All right. Go ahead, Prof. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Recently, um, I attended the um uh, conference by the uh um stock exchange. Because Malaysian Stock Exchange just recently launched the carbon market. Okay, this is the area where uh sustainable student, sustainable uh MBA sustainable business student should uh look into should be excited uh on on events like this. Okay, I attended that conference and then it is stated that uh, we have limited number or lack of expert in sustainability many companies don't have expert in sustainability whatever they have it is a, a, an organic uh, uh, competency or development in the company means that they send their staff for training and then they slowly build up the knowledge and competency so students that graduate with MBA, they should learn during the time that uh, during the time they at the campus should learn as much as they can, get whatever knowledge. Uh, if it is not in the discussion of modules, then you should gain from your your uh, ABL projects or your research paper. And then you can offer your services outside there as sustainability officer, manager, or whatever they name it. Uh, there are ranks for that. And if you are expert, uh, there will be a good package for you. And uh, I also conducted um master class uh for sustainability. Okay, master class on sustainability where. This is uh, three people uh, become facilitators. 
if you remember, I show you professor of practice, the chairman of the stock exchange, the chairman of uh, CIMB Bank, three of the uh, two of them, including myself, we have this session. And the chairman of CIMB mentioned to me because he brought together their sustainability officer. He said to me that lady is a, 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 a an organic uh, development of competency. It means that uh, the company send the, the staff for develop uh, for uh, getting information on sustainability and develop the competency. So when you get training at INSEF as an MBA student, you can polish your knowledge and you can upgrade yourself, become marketable to many companies. Look, there are 1,000 public listed companies out there In you, if you are talking about Malaysia. If you are talking abroad, there are um, many. Every country got 1,000. They require people with sustainability knowledge because they need to do reporting, they need to organize their projects and many more. So this is the where you can offer your services. If not, you can also go into corporate affairs because at corporate affairs, they also offer kind of reporting and organizing uh, activities related to sustainability. Sustainability is not only reporting. It is a program that you conduct in institution, number one, to minimize carbon produced by each individual. So they require people who are active, who are knowledge who can self-learn independent to organize program for example maybe you organize to minimize the use of electricity so how to do uh, minimize electricity if you learn this then you will look at your bulbs you can change the high-tech bulbs so all this require people with knowledge come to INSEF and learn <laughs> okay thank you Thank you very much, uh, Prof. If I may just interject uh, at this point. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Prof. and uh, Nisa for your presentation and also answering your questions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, within these webinars, what we how we tend to for a session to as good or bad, not bad, but engaging is when we see a lot of questions. And Alhamdulillah, today we've got quite a lot of questions. I think there's almost 50 uh, questions which shows a lot of uh, engagement. And this is what the session is for. Now, uh, I will open the floor for uh, any verbal questions. So just raise your hand and I will uh, uh, let you unmute. Uh, but I will only allow three questions uh, from... Uh, one question each from different individuals, inshallah, to to uh, to be fair, and uh, but do keep your questions uh, coming in on the on the uh, Q and A window, and then our team will will answer them accordingly, inshallah. So um, I have one uh, person who's been waiting since just now, Imam Fakir. So uh, please, uh, can you hear me? Please ask your question away. Sir? No? Okay. Uh, maybe your your question that you have was answered in the Q&A. Uh, up next, maybe you will let uh, Karamo Sawane. Karamo Sawane. Is this the Karamo Sawane? Are you back, Mr. Karamo? Mr. Karamo, can you hear me? Our oh, former student, right? Yeah. We cannot hear you. We can't hear you, Karamo. Uh, then we have to okay. Uh, maybe we'll find the line we'll, back. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll circle back to you. Allah. Um, Fahad Pase Ula, and okay, yeah, there you go. Your question, please. Assalamualaikum, guys. Can you Waalaikum hear me? Assalamualaikum. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Uh, so my question is about 
uh, job prospects if you like uh, graduate in the master in masters in Islamic finance practice from your university. So for an international student, I'm from Pakistan, right? So for an international student, what are the benefits or what boosts do you guys uh, provide as an organization to uh, international students coming into Malaysia for uh, uh, for uh, like masters in Islamic finance practice? Uh, so basically, what's the job prospects you guys offer? That's my question. Thank you. All right. Um, I think let me answer your question. We can look at from uh, two angles. Number one, uh, being in SAF alumni, we are proud to have more than 2,000 alumni around the globe. So when you talk to in SAF alumni, we feel like in a family okay when you talk to many of them in yeah in middle east in the us the uk europe it is everywhere so when you talk to them there might be some opportunity or some leads but some opportunity that is one thing okay so by saying that i'm from incef so they will yeah talk to you they will introduce you to something that is number one number two in job market now, there are many people with degree, bachelor degree, as well as master, but not many with master. Uh, if you want to say that with your paper qualification that you are guaranteed to get job, that is wrong. If, if you go to any university, they cannot guarantee with a paper qualification to get a job. But by having training education at a good university that give you multiple approach experience like at INSEF you have class classes you meet many people industry people you are foreigner that come to Malaysia you experience Malaysia of course you cannot speak locals you will improve your English and then um, you learn many things. I hope, and it is proven. I hope, and it is proven that many candidates that come to our campus learn and then become more competitive when they are facing people from various parts of the world in the same course. So they are they are eager. They become ch more challenging to improve themselves. So when you learn many new things, you improve yourself in terms of communication, writing skill, uh, your emotional intelligence, uh, and, and many other. So when you improve that, so you go out there, you can uh, more expose, you can offer your services to outsiders. Uh, to be honest, uh, employer not only look at paper qualification because paper qualification is only key or 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 uh, just uh, um, something means the the key for you to be at their office to to have an interview. After that, it is all up to your skill, all up to you yourself. So that's why I mentioned earlier: choose the best university that can offer you. Uh, uh, educational experience, then you will carry that experience in your life. Then when you meet your potential employer, you can offer what you have been trained. Okay, so so the key thing is it is you and where you've been trained and then how you, you learn throughout the process. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, I'm I'm very sure. I'm meeting many of my students. They are everywhere in the world. They they either they become entrepreneur. They themselves become entrepreneur. They don't want to work with people. They they create works for others. Uh, recently we have one guy, uh, who graduated from Insef MSc at Insef. He he opened up his own company and he engaged or he hired about ten Insef graduates from Indonesia, from Malaysia, and from Singapore. Become his consultant, become his, his uh, administrative officer, and, and many others. Uh, if you join INSEF, later on, I will disclose to you the name. 
but now I cannot because this is public space. I cannot name it. Uh, but we have live case where students who become uh, really competitive at market, uh, we have one guy who opened up his own bank. Our alumni open up his own bank. This is from the Stan Stan country, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. I'm not remember. Uh, if I may add on, uh, Prof, to your answer, um, the EMGS has just uh, newly announced uh, the government initiative, a new government in initiative whereby uh, international students may apply for a visa extension after their graduation. Uh, I think up to 12 months. Uh, we don't have a uh, uh, a minute details of such initiative, but uh, just to share with you the good news. Uh, if you happens, uh, to uh to 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 want to stay on uh and to explore opportunities um in Malaysia after your graduation, then you are able to do so with uh, with such uh, initiative. Of course, uh, as what Prof Zul mentioned. Um, your opportunity, your career opportunity would at the end of the day uh, rely on you, your uh, your, your skill set, uh, how you are able to secure your job here uh, in Malaysia or even uh, opportunity for you to even create job opportunity by creating your own startup. Uh, so those are uh, inshallah possible um, um, for you here with the new initiative by the government. But then again, um, I, if I can just put a caveat here, it is uh, r really recently announced. Uh, we don't have details yet, but uh, that is uh, basically a good news, especially for our students, uh, mainly postgraduate students. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask one more question? Hmm. Okay. So sure. my uh, another question is that what benefits are you guys going to provide an international student who is going to come from who is going to leave their country to attend the face-to-face -face pro uh, program instead of uh, like attending the online program. So like, why should I come to the face-to-face -face program and not opt for the online program? That's the gist of my question. Thank you. Nisa, you want to address? Sorry, I was uh, out just now. I'm so sorry. You, you might have to... Um, okay, okay, maybe, maybe I pick up this sorry. question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first, brother, if you uh, meet a lady or you have online conversation with a lady, which one is more convincing? Meet right. So if you come to Malaysia, you experience the education by seeing, means it's a believing. You are seeing the people here. You are... Part, you participate with the programs that we have. We are not only in class, you know. From time to time, from module to module, we have industry visit. We bring our student to stock exchange, for example. We bring our student to banks to meet the Sharia people there to discuss on issue related to Sharia. We bring students to the field when you involve with ABL projects. We bring you to the paddy field. We bring you to the cable car station. We bring you to many part, parts of Malaysia. Then the, the, the uh, learning process, the learning experience is not uh, static as online student. Okay? It is, it is multi-way, 360 degree, where you will learn more than classroom learning. You go outside side there, you meet people who are not like you, people from different environment and talk to them. And then this is where you explore the world. So I would say that if you have face-to-face, -face, means leaving your country, come to Malaysia, you will gain more uh, by uh, immersed into the environment. Uh, getting involved with the educational process. So uh, that is really valuable. And, and, and you will see people who are, their thinking is different than your society. So that adds a different perspective into you, yourself, your life, and your thinking. Right? 
All right, thank you, Prof. Uh, let's allow one more um, verbal question from Hanani Sridi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you for this meeting, and uh, I want to expose to you my uh, my uh, difficulty, which is I'm uh, I'm a teacher in Morocco, and I, uh, uh, of um, economics and accounting in French language. At the same time, I'm in the first year uh, in PhD in uh, Islamic uh, finance, and uh, the Islamic Studies uh, University in Morocco. And now I'm so interested in uh, your uh, uh, courses, but I don't have an English, uh, a good English, and uh, uh, I don't have an English certificate. Uh, in the same time, uh, I'm interested in uh, uh, online courses because uh, I'm working in Morocco and I, I cannot uh, leave my country. Uh, and I don't want to change my job. And at the same time, I'm interested in uh, international experiences and to, to keep uh, my goal in the scientific searches in Islamic finance. So uh, uh, the, you, you have exposed your, the, pro, the programs in your uh, university. And I think uh, the EMIF program will be uh, maybe uh, available for, for me. But my question is, uh, is there any chances to to for me to 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 follow the courses even if it's in English? Uh, this is my first question because my 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 um, studying in uh, PhD is in Arabic, and I work in French, and now I'm I'm going to study in English. It's a very uh, big challenge for me. Uh, my second question. Is there any possibilities to communicate with students in your university just to exchange experiences and to be very near the the um, 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 uh, atmosphere in your uh, university? I'm I'm not sure if it's uh, clear. Uh, my question is it's clear or not? Uh, and thank you for your uh, efforts. Yeah, you're I still online. Quite... You want yeah. to answer? Yeah, I, I maybe I can attempt, and then Prof, you can, uh, of course, um, fill in, uh, the big gap that I have. So, um, if you're talking about online program, um, I think from what I heard, uh, there is, uh, I don't think you will have much issue um learning in english i think you you will be doing fine but uh in terms of admission um we still uh would ask you for your english proficiency test uh that is um the requirement that is set by the ministry and we have to abide by that um but um i realize that sometimes uh when um you are in a community even though it's online community then uh you will be um, um, forced to communicate in English and discuss in English when you are working as a uh, in a group. In terms of um, you know um, communicating with the fellow um students, I mean we can always patch you up with uh someone uh, uh who can provide you uh their experience as, as an online student. But uh, I'm actually hoping that uh, someone from the attendees can help me. I saw some uh, familiar names uh, here um, that probably can just speak up and share their experience. Um, um, Zainab Ahsan, I saw you. <laughs> I think you are the Zainab that I know. Uh, even though I actually don't know that you're going to be online. Uh, there you go. Yeah, Zaina, I hope you can speak out uh, and share with uh, with us uh, your experience. Although you are not doing online, you are doing doing it uh, face to face, but you can share with us. Um, I saw Karamo just now, but I think he has left um the session. Yeah, I think he's left the session. But my brother Karamo is also a good um uh, example. But uh, perhaps uh, sister Zaina, if you can. Uh, uh, just um, unmute yourself and uh, you know, share with us, and perhaps you can have a conversation with uh, the sister who answered the question earlier. Go ahead. 
Assalamualaikum everyone. I'm so so happy to see familiar faces. How are you doing? Well, Alhamdulillah. I hope you're doing well, Prof. Yeah. So, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I I really I mean, uh, uh, sister. First of all, I would just like to share that nothing nothing beats the experience of I think being part of the IMSIA family. It's been uh, I don't know five six years uh, almost since I passed out, but um, it 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 I I I think. The, there are very very few universities uh, that actually not only you know uh, help students develop uh, academically but also like a more all rounded and a very very inclusive environment is what uh, alhamdulillah I was able to experience that in self i happen to be from india and uh, i think just during my two and a half or three years at insef uh, i i could grow a lot as a person as well so even the brother who had asked about you know why should i attend in person as opposed to online so obviously online is also again a, a means of just enabling more people to be part of uh, you know the islamic finance ecosystem but if you are able to attend in person i mean there, there is just no comparison i think just in terms of the uh, the number of people you meet the number of friends you will make uh, not to mention the excellent malaysian food <laughs> alhamdulillah so <laughs> the the the, the um, I think the experience of being at INSEF is very, very unique in that, uh, first of all, uh, primarily it's a postgraduate level institution, right? So most of the people and most of your classmates and peers will all have a, a certain uh, level of experience either in the industry or in the academic uh, space. And there's also a lot of diversity within that group as well. So when it comes to the English language, I think listening to you, sister, I really feel, mashallah, you already speak very well and you, you can do really well. So don't uh, discount yourself. Uh, and and once you're at himself, I'm like 100%, 110% sure that, you know, everyone around you, including the professors, the staff and the students would be more than willing to, you know, provide you the support uh, to provide you any clarification that you might need. So there's always this openness and accessibility, I think, at INSEF. So please, please don't feel intimidated by any of that. Um, and, and I really hope that, you know, Allah makes things easy for you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sister. Uh, Hanani, if you have any follow-up question after that, oh, he's gone. She's gone. Oh, oh. okay. She's still there. She's still there. Yeah. Yep, Hanani. Just now, the Hanani asked question. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Starting from next year, we have PhD. You can write in Arabic. If you it come across to your mind, you want to change university, we always open our door for you. When when um, exactly will that will that uh, uh the the Senate already approved recent sitting? I think last two days we have Senate meeting. It is approved now for us to communicate with the ministry. I think yeah, uh we're going to have a PhD in Arabic. Uh, I mean the 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 class will be in English, but the writing the thesis will you can opt for Arabic or local language Bahasa or English. We have three options. Excellent. Um, I can we allow one more question, uh, Nisa and Prof. Verbal yeah. question. Yeah. Okay, Muhammad uh, Farid. Uh, your question, please. Oh, yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm actually uh, same as I think uh, one of lady uh, who was speaking just a while ago regarding the Arabic language. I think I'm also the same situation as uh. Because I'm also graduated from an Arabic school, uh, Cairo. And then uh, I, I didn't do any uh, English language course or anything. Just reading books and uh, just uh, normal practice in English. As Moldy is very much practicing in English in the business field and other ways. So that's why I have some knowledge in language. But I have a, a huge barrier uh, to write and draft things. I mean... Uh, but speaking, uh, I think I can do, but uh, understanding also okay, but uh, drafting sometimes it's a huge problem for me. So that, uh, and uh, that's one part of my question. Okay, so that, uh, I don't know how I can enter the uh, uh, course. I mean, the entry requirement is, uh, I can see that is, uh, I think TOEFL or IELTS or any kind of requirements uh, should be there. It must be there as, as, as he mentioned before, that's a government requirement. <laughs> That's one uh, issue for me. Uh, 
this is the second time i'm trying to join the course uh, from inside uh, even last year i tried but then uh, not officially because of lack of time for me and then the second part of the question is uh, to improve my language and to do the course i want to uh, know if i if it is possible to do one part of the course online and uh, maybe some part of the same course physical because i like to do physical but uh, time is not helping me i have a family and uh, business also in mali very busy so is it possible to uh, organize something like this available i mean which course are you planning to enroll in actually i'm a graduate in sharia and law okay okay so i want to uh, i want to start from scratch to be uh, honest i mean from this stand finding so our our masters program is it Master's program, but before that, I need to do uh, basic maybe that that would be better because I have a language issue in the meantime. Not uh, the uh, knowledge. I think I can also gain with the finance because I'm also a board member of a government company. I did to, for three years, so I have some knowledge, but that's not enough. So Islamic finance, I need to do basic first, and then join the master's program. So advise me what how I do and. What's the best way that I can continue my study? All right, uh, brother, what the name? His name. Ahmed what? What Sari. is the again? Faris. Sorry, Muhammad Faris. Muhammad Faris. Okay. Uh, Faris. Let me answer your 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 uh, concern. Uh, first, uh, our program is designed uh, specifically. Um, on on a uh, different mode. MSc it is uh, a face to face program. MBA is a face face to face program, and EMIF Executive Master Islamic Finance is online program, and it is uh, the uh, requirement by the uh, accreditation body and the ministry that uh. We have to design our modules consistently. Means that if it is face to face, all modules should be face to face. If it is online, all modules must be online. Then student who take uh one program, for example, MBA, MF, MIFP, which is face to face mode, you have to consistently take all modules. In the program, and all modules in the program is designed as a face-to-face -face, uh, modules. Okay, if you take EMIF, Executive Master Islamic Finance, due to some limitation, then uh, you have to consistently take all modules in EMIF, which is uh online modules, and it is not allowed to cross. I mean, take one online, one face to face. It it cannot be like that. All right. On improving language, brother Faris, don't worry, brother Faris. It's happened to everybody. Uh, I uh, would say my personal experience. I studied locally for my first degree and second degree. I did my bachelor and master in Malaysia. Being a village boy, come from village. I don't have exposure to English language at all. Okay, because my family is a villager where we speak local language. We don't speak English at all at home. So English is something strange. And then my employer at that time, the government, uh, when I apply for my uh, PhD, they don't allow me to take in Malaysia. They said, why, why? You want to be a lecturer and then you want to study in Malaysia again. After your first degree in Malaysia, second degree in Malaysia, you have to go to see the world. The world, I still remember. They said, see the world. Go out there. Don't study in my whatever university that I choose in Malaysia. So my experience being thrown out from Malaysia, study in the UK, and someone not in London, you know. My university in Cardiff. Cardiff is something like a village of the UK. So their language, the way they speak, it is in the throat. So their English is something in deep in the throat. First, I have 
challenges to understand English, second, to understand their essence. You see, if you come to Malaysia, it's easy. The language of Malaysian language is, is not like the UK. The way we speak is very uh, at the mouth, very thin, not deep in the throat. So I think if you come to INSEF, you will improve your English. You have uh, not even basic, you have intermediate conversation in English. So I think you can improve a lot if you, you study in INSEF. If you are unable to join face-to-face, -face, then join online. From there, you need to be active and, and you need to speak because language is where you practice. You need to open your mouth, make mistake. From there, you learn. All right, brother. Uh, yes, so I, then I would like to join the online class first. Later on, maybe I can do the physical class. Yeah. All right. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Prof and Nisa, for uh, answering uh, the questions from our, our attendees. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, uh, we love to chat more, but uh, time uh, has come to an end uh, for the webinar. But we will still leave the uh, Q&A or this, this webinar open for the Q&A. So do ask your, keep the questions coming. We'll leave it on for another, uh, let's say, 10 minutes. Uh, for our team to get back to you and answer your questions that you have um, pertaining to INSEF, to uh, our programs, maybe the, the industry, career prospects, uh, financial and scholarships, aids, etc. cetera. Um, in fact, there's one interesting question, maybe Nisa can, can address it. The, uh, can you share tips for scholarships? Uh, so maybe you can you can uh, address that in the in the uh, chat uh, window, the so Q and A window. Sorry. Uh, uh, I, I like I like to uh, verbalize this. Uh, go ahead, it's, yeah. it's hard to type it. Might not find the right uh, words for it. Mm -hmm. But um, when we are offering scholarship, we have been offering scholarships to since two thousand nine. So meaning that we have seen many who have graduated um while uh, with the help of scholarship uh and now serving the industry so that is the tradition that we want to continue uh we want to um uh, give scholarship or we would like to assist um someone who will be beneficial um in the future uh, someone who can contribute back to the community, someone who is able to contribute back to the industry or even uh, nation building for that matter. So inshallah, um, we hope that we are able to support your dream, uh, whatever that may be. If it's in line with the existence of INSEAF University as a whole, then um let us be partners and um, we'll fund your um, tuition fees and in return you will do excellently and graduate with flying colors and you know um, serve back your community or the industry uh, for a better uh, for a better future inshallah so that's the tips so if you come to the interview session uh, you know Actually, I don't know what to do. I'm not even sure what to uh, what to apply. Uh, definitely not the kind of uh, candidates that we are looking for. So you need to be firm of where you want to be. Uh, even though that is just uh, a planning, uh, a, a draft, um, or a sketch or whatsoever. At least you have a plan that you are looking forward uh, to to do with the qualification that you are applying for. So I hope um, that sums up the question on tips for the scholarship thank you excellent thank you very much uh, nisa so uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the end of uh, our webinar today. I would like to express uh, my gratitude to both Nisa and Prof Zo for spending the time uh, and sharing uh, sharing knowledge and experience with us and our attendees today. Um, for once again, uh, I will leave the. I will leave the Q and A, or, or I'll leave this webinar open for the next uh, 
five minutes if I, I don't want to say any more. If not, my colleagues will, will start to uh, strangle me if I say more than five minutes. But we'll leave it at five more minutes for anyone who, who want who have any more questions that, uh, that you want to ask. Please type them in, in the Q&A window. Uh, in the meantime, I will, uh, maybe I can display the one of the slides uh, that we that we that prof shared uh, earlier on on the programs and the credit hours and so on uh, so with that thank you very much ladies and gentlemen once again my name is Aizuddin it's been a delight to have everyone uh, join our webinar today alhamdulillah was very interactive very informative hope you have benefited and hopefully see you very soon in our programs either online or in person at INSEF University in Kuala Lumpur uh, thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh have a great day wherever you are Thank you.